I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, 95% of the people that saw this little thumbnail on their feed, they're not gonna click on this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. I'll tell you why nobody's gonna watch this video. It's because it's not about smashing driver. I don't even have a real driver. This is my mini driver, it is my driver. If you're not making videos about hitting driver 300 yards or how to hit your seven iron 228 yard carry, 90, 95% of the people that are scrolling through and see that video, they're not gonna click on it. Talk a little bit about strategy and we're gonna talk about honesty. Also, a little bit of short game stuff. Now this par five, is 494.4 yards long. It's fairly straight away. It's not a dog leg. It doesn't have a bunch of undulations up and down. It's not a super tight, you know, shoot of a hole like something out of Augusta. I have zero shot at getting on this green in two. There are lots of younger players and more skilled players that can easily pump a ball out there 300, 310, 320, and then hit a seven iron into this green 200 yards and be putting for eagle. Uh, I'm not one of those people. Turns out, most of us are not one of those people. Average drive for amateur male golfers is somewhere around 220 to 225. Now, 90% of amateur male golfers will never believe that or admit to it. That kind of leads me to my point here. One of the points I want to make is you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to know what yardages you really pull off on average, on average with your clubs, not when, when you say average to people, you say, what's your average drive? Some, for some reason, the, the brain disconnects and it short circuits and it starts thinking about the best drives. You remember where I hit it out there and it was 284 yards when we looked on the sprinkler head? And then they say they average 280, 284 off the tee. No, you don't. No, you don't. There are people that do average that, sure, but they are in the minority. And even if you try and do a take on it where you're looking at a more realistic average, of how far you hit it off the tee and you eliminate those really poorly struck severe duck hooks that went 120 yards out into the trees. You need to also eliminate the ones that went further because you hit off of a 100 foot cliff. You need to eliminate those too. About 90% of golfers either purposely or not so purposely lie about those yardages. They have no idea. So get a yardage card. Know your distances. This club, I average around 235 to 240 yards. I can't hit it further than that. I could also hit you a couple that are shorter than that. But at 500 yards, knowing that I'm not going to get on this green in two, I'm going to go ahead and take the pressure off. Because even if I hit a really solid drive, a really good drive, what I would call a, I don't know, a 10 percenter, top 10 percent of my, my results, and I hit it, say, 260, 265, I'm still gonna have 225, 235, 240 left into this green. And then my next club down is a three hybrid and I would have to have a career three hybrid to get that distance as well. So I'm gonna take the pressure off right away. I'm gonna hit a driver that's gonna hopefully find the fairway. I'm not gonna swing out of my shoes. I'm not gonna go for too much. I'm gonna try and keep it where I know I can get to. And I'm gonna just put it down there. Maybe let's just go for 230 yards. All right, should be fine. Left it out just a touch right, but like I said, this is a pretty, well, now look at that. I just lied, I just hit about a 10 percenter. That's 260 yards. It is a little bit out to the right. I didn't swing hard though, I didn't try and do too much. I just tried to put it out in the fairway, 230. There's 260. Now, looking at that, I've got 243 yards left into this green. I don't have a club in that bag that I can hit off of the turf and realistically have a shot at getting there. This is where your individuality needs to come into play. Some of you may subscribe to the school of thought of strokes gained and you need to try and get it out there as far as possible and as close to the hole as possible. So you would say, all right, let's pull the three hybrid. And even though this will only go about 225 off of the turf, maybe 220 on average for me, I don't know about for you, let's get it down there as close as we can and then we'll have a, a little pitch or a chip shot or something to get up on the green. And you could do that. What happens if you have a bad result with this? 
you blow it right, you top it, you pop it up in the air, you hook it off the planet. The odds of me having a bad shot with this club are higher than they would be with, say, a mid iron, a six iron, right? So I just want to get something down there because I'm really comfortable with half wedges, half a 54, half of a 60, somewhere in that 50, 60 yard range. I'm actually really comfortable with that. As a matter of fact, I would prefer that. I think that's going to give me my best chance at a birdie. So if I've got 240 yards and I want to hit something that's going to leave me about 50, 60 yards into this green, I want to hit something that's going to go in the 180 to 190 range. It's just a good old average six iron for me, and I like this club. That makes it an even better choice because I'm now I'm hitting a club that I'm fairly comfortable with. You may want to split this in half and say 243, I'd like to hit 120 yard shot and then 120 yard shot. And you could certainly do that. That might be pitch and wedge, pitch and wedge for you. You could certainly do that. You could try and go at it with a three wood. If you're really good with your three wood off the turf and you know that you're not going to spray it way left OB or spray it way right out of bounds or into the water, hey, that's, that's for you to decide. I don't have a three wood. I don't have a club that's going to get there. I just want to leave myself a nice 50 to 60 yard shot coming into this green. So I'm going to take my six iron, set up to it, and make just a normal average swing. Wasn't the best strike in the world. It's 180 yards, leave myself 66 in. Even if I don't hit the best shot, even if I miss a little right, miss a little left, I'm hitting to an area where I'm pretty safe. Now, at 66 yards, I know that a good 9, 930, 54 degree, I use the clock system. I know that about 930 with my arms is about a 66, 65 yard, 54 degree shot. I'm in a perfect position here. If I miss it a little left, I've got plenty of green. Miss it a little right, plenty of green. A little long, plenty of green. A little short, I've got some wiggle room, but I would say the play here for average golfers is going to be to try and fly it to 66. And if it rolls out a little bit, you're fine. You don't want to end up short-sided here. I don't want to hit this 60 and then have it go nowhere on some kind of false front. All right. So I want to make sure I get it back there. I have a pretty simple short game. Back and through. I've got a bump and run, and I've got a pitch. And then this, I guess, would be a partial wedge. Don't try and go for flop shots. Don't try and pull off shots you don't know. If you have shots that you don't know that you want to play, work on them, practice them, and make them bomb-proof first, then put them into the game, not the other way around. So I'm going to do a little bit of a 930. 930, 54 degree here, right at the flag. Right about there. Flew it about 60 yards. It's going to end up being 67 and a half, seven foot 10 inches away from the hole. I've got a really good shot at making that putt on the simulator and on the golf course for birdie. That, for me, is how I play the vast majority of the par fives that I look at. I try to play to my strengths, try to avoid my weaknesses, and I really don't try to do too much. I'm honest with myself. Am I gonna pull it off? Am I gonna have a great hole every time? Am I gonna get a birdie or a par every time? No, absolutely not. You're gonna have those holes. You're gonna have the bad holes. You're gonna have the bad results. It's gonna happen. But you're trying to avoid at least as many of them as you can by playing smart. You got to think through these things. And the first step is to be honest with yourself about who you are, what you can do, what you can't do, and what your real yardages are. Make yourself a yardage card. Have the yardage card for all of your clubs. Learn them back to front. And then what you can do, I've got a pitch and wedge here, is say, okay, a full pitch and wedge for me goes, let's say, a uh, carry of 125, all right? Well, what happens if I play it to 9 o'clock like I did, a 9 o'clock pitching wedge? What happens if I get to a 10 o'clock pitching wedge? And then there's the 11 o'clock, which is a full swing. What happens with all those? Chart those distances as well. 
those will help you out, especially on the in-between yardages. How many times are you going to be in between clubs? Oh, man, this is 135. It's too much for pitch and wedge, but it's not enough for 9-iron. I'm going to try and take some off of a 9-iron. Anytime I ever try and take some off as far as effort or speed and let myself be a little bit more slack through it, it's never a good result. I want to be able to have the same consistent effort at the golf ball. I'll just take it back to a shorter place. That may not work for you, or it may. Either way, you got to put in the time and the work to practice to have that confidence, then you can strategize and play golf properly by thinking your way around the golf course rather than just playing golf roulette. Anyway, that's been the video. I know you didn't watch it. You, me, and the other 12 people that happened to see this to this point this far, thanks very much for the support. Give me a like on the video down below. See you next week.